Hello, my name is Salima Mamdani, and I want to welcome you to today's presentation called Designers with Influence, Impact, and Income. The five shifts to create a six-figure design business. Now, I know how valuable your time is, and I don't want to take it for granted, so let's get started. Who this presentation is for? This is for all design professionals, decorators, and home stagers, regardless of your design style or niche. If you're currently working one-on-one -on -one with clients and spending far too much time working in your business instead of on your business, this presentation is for you. Because in the next 45 minutes or so, I am going to share with you how to turn your expertise into a six-figure income, even if that number seems ridiculous and unachievable for you right now. I will share with you how to command a premium price and stop trading dollars for hours to move quickly into earning five figures a month, how to attract and connect with your ideal clients in a consistent and reliable way, how to leverage your expertise into group programs instead of working simply one-on-one -on -one and make more money in less time, and how to do all of this without the overwhelm, frustrations, and burnout from all the marketing hacks that everyone has you doing. So my promise for you today is to show you a step-by-step -step plan that lets you hit your income goals, impact even more clients, and live the lifestyle of your dreams. There's nothing for sale, and I'm going to share with you some of my best strategies. So grab a notebook, and turn off all distractions. Now let me ask you this, does this sound like you? Do you tr have trouble getting new clients or don't know how to do it consistently? Do you start out each month wondering how are you going to pay your bills? Or do you secretly know your work is worth more than what you're charging, but you're afraid if you raise your prices, no one will pay them? Are you working way too hard for not enough money while juggling work and family priorities and you don't know how to fix it? Do you see other designers quickly rising to the top, getting tons of social media followers, finding amazing clients, and you just don't know how they're doing it? Or do you feel like there's an invisible ceiling on your income? Well, if any of that sounds like you, then I have some good news. You see, none of those are the real problem. They're just the symptoms. The real problem is that you haven't made the shifts. And once you make these shifts, you'll have complete control over who you work with, how you work with them, and the prices you can command. You'll know how to market yourself as the number one authority in your industry and gain trust, not just clicks and likes, from your ideal clients. You'll realize that there is no invisible ceiling on how much money you can make, and you'll push through to a six-figure income in less time than you thought possible. And you'll do all of this while tapping back into the joy you first had when you first started. The one thing you need to know is that there are five simple shifts you need to create in order to achieve a six-figure design business while working fewer hours with clients who truly value and appreciate your work. Now, doesn't that sound great? And I'm going to walk you through exactly how to make those shifts. Let me just take 60 seconds to introduce you um, to who I am. Like I said, my name is Salima Mamdani. I am a marketer who earned her stripes working for Fortune 100 and 500 companies. While I was plenty busy running a large marketing department and got to work on million dollar campaigns, I was missing out on being with my kids. Leaving the house before my kids woke up and showing up after they were tucked in bed by the nanny was not how I wanted to remember their younger years. So in 2008, I decided to leave my cushy job to start my own marketing consultancy, which I built 
into a successful seven-figure agency with 10 full-time staff and earned top rankings across several categories. Not only that, I also got to work with some of the biggest brand and businesses and the types of clients I wanted to work with, especially in the interior design, reno, and construction industry. That was my passion, and I got to finally make it happen. You see, my specialty is to help my clients find their clients while creating processes and systems that do the selling for them. Now, fast forward to nine years. Nine years of running my agency, I realized that I had actually built myself a golden cage. I found myself working nonstop again, evenings and weekends and even during the holidays. Even though I had my own business and a team of talented staff, the buck stopped with me. Every time there was an issue with my client's projects, things would get escalated to me. I felt like I was at everyone else's beck and call all day long. Plus, my industry, marketing industry, was also getting super competitive. And anyone with basic skills and a laptop was now competing to steal my clients. I was literally giving away our services just to keep my clients happy, yet constantly worried about where to find new clients. When I realized that I was basically trading dollars for hours and that my agency's revenue was capped by how many hours we could spend on each project, made me really sick to my stomach. I knew it all needed to change if I wanted to be around my family and still continue to earn the living to afford the lifestyle that I had built. So I started to study some of the bigger names in my industry that were not only more successful, but those who had quote unquote figured it out for themselves. And I started to work with some of the biggest mentors and coaches to help me make this change. I started to incorporate these changes, what I like to call shifts, into my business. And soon, clients and other service professionals started to pay attention to my new way of doing business. And they all started to ask me what I'd been doing differently. These shifts have helped me not only maintain my income level while working far less and enjoying the true meaning of work-life balance, but that also means that I can shut off my phone and travel with my hubby and my kids without checking my emails constantly. Doesn't that sound great? Well, over the years, I also noticed one thing. In working with the design, reno, and decor industry specifically, that there are a lot of parallels and similarities between what was going on in my industry and what's also happened in the interior design, decor, and reno industry. I had been working with some of the biggest players in the furniture, appliances, fabric, paint, flooring, even lighting brands that were known both locally and internationally. And through those clients, I met some of the um, biggest design and trade professionals and specifiers and developed some really deep and meaningful relationships with these service providers. And through these relationships, I gained a lot of valuable insights, which I'd like to share with you right now. What I've learned over the years in the design industry is that just like marketing, it's changing rapidly. And aside from the top two to 4% of the designers, most design professionals are having difficulties maintaining or growing their business. The old model is obsolete. And everyone from architects, general contractors, even painters and retailers, are giving away free design consultations and are basically eating your lunch. Do you agree with that? Have you seen that happening in your area? I bet you have. What else is also happening is that designers are used to charging their fees um, either on an hourly or a project basis, which basically means they're trading dollars for, offer, uh, for hours, which ends up putting a cap on your earning potential. If you work 10 hours, you can earn 10 hours worth of keep. If you work 
20 hours, um, that's how much you can earn. But basically, that's it. You cannot make more hours in a day. What else is happening in the industry? Trade commissions that a lot of design professionals and decorators used to rely on um, from the trade partners is also disappearing. Most brands are now selling direct to consumers. And those that are offering commissions, now designers are using those as incentives for acquiring new clients and are passing those commissions over to their clients. Just like the marketing industry, design industry is also facing fierce competition. And you know that makes you want to work evenings and weekends and holidays. There are more and more people graduating from design schools and going straight to starting their own businesses. They're not going to work for the big corporations. This has always been an industry with low retention or recurring revenue opportunities. Now, people don't do uh, renovations and remodeling every month or every year. It's a project that happens every 5, 10, 15 years in their lifetime. So what happens with a design professional once you finish working with a client, you have to say goodbye and start looking for a new client all over again. So there is no way of earning a recurring revenue. And at the end of the day, after doing all that, what you're left with are thankless clients who don't pay on time, they drag projects on and on, and they question your expertise because they think they can do it better. So overall, designers are making less and less in hourly rates than ever before. And they're working more and more just to keep their clients happy. So in this presentation, it's kind of hard for me to know exactly where you are in your business right now and how much you're earning each month, whether you're making $10,000, $15,000, or $25,000 a month. That's great if you're doing that. Or maybe you're making even more than that, but you somehow feel like you are tied to your business and you can't even take a couple of days off without feeling guilty. If any of this sounds like you, then definitely this presentation is going to help you. Because the bottom line is it's time to make some changes in your business before it's too late. And the way to make these changes is by implementing the shifts that I'm about to share with you. So let's look at the first shift, which is think solutions, not services. Most of you are probably thinking, well, what's the difference? So let's explore this a little bit. Service is measured by the list of tasks performed in a given timeline in exchange for money, whereas a solution is measured in terms of the transformation or the value you provide based on your understanding of your client's need. Huge difference between the two. So when you focus on service, you immediately become a commodity and start competing with everyone else for price. When you focus on solution, you get perceived as an influencer, as a partner, and as a um, solution provider um, for your clients. Your clients these days aren't hiring you for something that they can do on their own or from watching YouTube videos, right? Let's be honest. Your clients are way more savvy than ever before, and they can sniff out the professionals from the pretenders. So if you want to have influence and impact in your business, then start thinking of your clients' needs and offer valuable solutions. So think of it this way. A house is one of the most important purchases in a person's lifetime, right? And a mortgage is probably the number one expense on a monthly basis. So is it important that your client hires the design professional who will provide a solution for them or add value for them? Absolutely. So for example, if your client, let's say, is a young couple with a growing family, they can barely make ends meet and are now looking at either downsizing and moving to an apartment, or maybe they want to think about converting their basement into a rental apartment for you know, additional income. Who do you think they're going to hire? Are they going to hire someone who 
um, is just going to give them the, a series of tasks or, you know, worse is an amateur doesn't know what it's like to live in a cramped house or what it's like to have a growing family or what it's like to not understand what the bylaws are and what they need to do. No, they're going to hire a professional to get them out of this problem so that they can continue to live in the home of their dreams while sending their kids to hockey camp and have additional income uh, to meet their monthly expenses, right? So right now you have to think about your ideal clients and what are they looking for? They're looking for someone who understands their situation, their issues, their pain points, and can deliver a valuable transformation that's unique to them. That is the difference between solutions and services. So I urge you to think bigger. Stop playing small with lists of services and start creating real solutions. What are some of the solutions or valuable transformations you can offer to your clients? Can you help your clients increase the market value of their homes? Amazing. Do you help your clients create a sanctuary when they come home after a long, stressful day at work? Wonderful. Do you help your clients save their marriage or restore family dynamics by delivering a home transformation on time? That is, that is just the most valuable thing someone can deliver to them, right? That's just um, priceless for someone to have. Now, if you're still wondering what is your solution, what is your secret sauce or the value that you bring, I want you to answer these questions. What are the issues that your clients are facing right now? What are your true strengths in this area? And what's the best way you can help them? And finally, what would be the real value you bring to them? So jot these four questions down and think about it maybe after this presentation to start developing and thinking solutions, not services. Because once you, if you get it wrong, you'll never get farther than becoming a project manager at best. Remember, the industry is changing and you need to take strides to, to get ahead of the changes. You'll be overlooked by your clients if you don't make these changes. If you get this right, you will be seen as a design influencer and regarded as the best of the best and take control of your destiny. Now let's look at the second shift, which is to command premium pricing. I know this is a very difficult topic for many designers to talk about. Most designers that I've talked to are reluctant to charge a higher fee. Why? Probably what I see with the newer um, designers is because they don't feel like they are confident enough to charge a higher fee. They're just starting out or um, they want to build a portfolio still before they can garner um, the higher price points. Well, let me ask you this. If you have a toothache and you need to get a root canal surgery done uh, and you need to go see a, a dental surgeon, do they tell you that they've they are charging a lower rate because they're just starting out? No, they just show you where the issue is, they go ahead and perform the surgery, and they, they fix your problem. So you pay the amount that that's worth, right? And then there are those designers who have been doing this for years and charging low rates. Um, they just don't feel confident enough to charge a higher rate. Now, if I could show to you that by charging a higher fee, you're actually going to do a service um, to your clients, would you be open to that? You see, this is what's happening right now. The, there are two reasons why you're not charging a premium rate. One is either you think your work isn't good enough, or you think your work is good enough, but you feel if you charge more money, no one will pay for it. So let me ask you again, if I was to share with you a way um, or the reasons why charging a higher fee is actually good for you, but also for your clients, would you be open to that? Great. 
Let me share some of the few rules that you need to understand right now about commanding a premium price plan. First of all, remember that you're not selling your time. You're not trading those dollars for hours. You're not selling even your expertise or credentials or your network or your Volodex. And you're definitely not selling how many years experience you have because no one really cares. At the end of the day, what your clients care about is the value of the service you're going to provide to them. What does it mean for them if you can increase the market value of their home? What does it mean for your client if they can continue to live in the house of their dreams and collect rental income at the same time? It's invaluable, right? And that's what they're willing to pay an expert to come and help them with. Second, high prices actually reassure your clients that they're working with the best of the best. So why would you want to rob them of that? Clients who pay more for a service actually value you and the results even more. They'll listen to your advice and direction and they'll show up prepared and they will keep their end of the bargain, no doubt, since they're more invested in working with you, right? Think of it when you go to a gym and you're paying, say, $50 a month to attend their group classes. You may show up, you may not show up, you might put in some you know, effort into doing the classes, but what happens if you hire a, a personal trainer at the gym who charges $100 or $150, $150 an hour? You're not only going to make sure that you show up for that appointment, but most likely you're going to try and show up 10 minutes before so you've got your warm-up done and you're ready to get started. You don't want to miss a single minute of that hour with the personal trainer, right? And that's exactly what's happening in this scenario. Now, third rule is that people who pay more will actually get better results than people who don't. Why is that? It's because when you're charging more, you don't have to work with so many clients at the same time. You can dedicate your uh, attention and your time to people, to fewer people at a time, and make sure that you give them those invaluable results, those transformations. So it's a win-win. And lastly, it is much easier to reach your income goals when you are charging higher prices plus if it takes the same amount of effort to find a client for a lower fee service as it is for a higher fee, which one would you choose? So you see, it's a win-win-win scenario for everyone. And if you want to have influence and impact, then I encourage you to stop charging small amounts, stop trading dollars for hours, and start commanding premium fees. Now let's look at the third shift, which is totally inside my wheelhouse. It's about creating a client attraction system so that you can consistently bring in new clients into your business. You don't have to stop and start your search for new clients. When you finish a project, then all of a sudden you go, oh my God, how am I going to get new clients next month? Or where's my next client going to come from? This is going to show you how to create a system um, that brings you new clients on a consistent basis. Why is this so important? Because customers and cash flow are the lifeblood of any business. I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's true. Think about it. And you need a marketing system that gets you new clients like a machine. What does that mean, a system? It means that you can be having this process it works in the background and it can be repeated over and over again and can be scaled when you're ready to grow. So you don't have to manually write a blog. You don't have to manually um, attend a networking event. Those are all things that require manual intervention. They require, um, they cause a friction in your business. So you're looking to create a system um, that can work on its own it can be repeated and it can be scaled when you are ready to scale your business. Unfortunately though, most designers, in fact, most service providers focus on doing a whole lot of sporadic friction activities instead of focusing on creating one system. 
Now, let me ask you this. Is this what you've been doing right now to build your business, to get some, uh, you know, to get your name out there and to become known? Are you blogging? You're tweeting. You're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. You're on Pinterest. You're on House trying to promote your portfolio. You go to networking events. You hope for PR to, you know, come through. You're looking for referrals and you encourage your clients, you know, to talk about you by giving them incentives and lowering your price for them. Uh, maybe you're into doing live videos and attending trade shows. Perhaps you think SEO is the way to bring consistent clients or you're on Facebook Messenger and sending, you know, these um, messenger bots type of um, ads to your clients. Perhaps you're looking to get on TV at the, you know, the local stations, or you submit your work to magazines and hope that it will catch the attention of the editors. You're into branding, live streaming. You're, you're attending online groups and talking about your design work, and you're trying to look for speaking gigs at events. Well, all of these things are great. And if you enjoy doing them, they're all great. Continue to do them. But when you're doing all of these things separately and without a strategy, there's a whole lot of problem out there with this web method of doing marketing. Trust me, not only because of my marketing background, but because I have been there myself. You see, I have a staff of 10 um, marketers and we were writing blogs all the time. We were updating our social media all the time. We were on Twitter, we were on Instagram, we were, you know, blog posting for other people, we were sharing ideas everywhere. What does that get us? Actually, nothing. A whole lot of time spent and no new clients because there was no strategy behind it. Um, we ended up wasting hours. And in fact, for me as the employer, I ended up wasting a lot of money doing this because I was paying them for all that time. Um, when you are sending your, uh, you're spending your time and efforts everywhere, you spread yourself thin and you need a lot of resources, you need a lot of software skills, and you need a lot of different skill sets to learn all of this stuff. You need to be a proficient in blogging. You need to know about Instagrams, you know, uh, latest hashtags. You need to know about Pinterest and how to create uh, pictures that are perfect for Pinterest. And then you need to talk about SEO and how to create some traffic from SEO. That's a lot of different things that you need to learn. And what's worse is when you put yourself out there in all of these media, and if you have no strategy and no system working in the background, you have nowhere to send these people. Where are they going to go? And that is the biggest challenge because when these people have nowhere to go, you end up seeing no results, right? You've posted all over social media. You've posted all over um, your, you know, your affiliate sites and you're blogging all the time. Um, where, where's that leading to? It's not bringing you the clients. And what it ends up doing is that it just becomes a never ending cycle of work, work, and more work. You're just constantly looking for the latest tactic or the hack that you need to follow, the latest shiny new object to chase after because one person had success in it. And so you start doing, uh, you know, focusing on that. But because you're spread, you're, you, you're spread thin and you don't have a strategy, you're not seeing the results. So, how about if I walk you through a very simple, strategy which requires only four steps and maybe um say 20 to 30 minutes of your day would you be open to that okay great let me show with show you the four step strategy of the client attraction system that we implement not only for our business but also our clients business step number one is to choose your social media platforms and choose them wisely I want you to select only one or two platforms and choose them because you're a comfortable using them and you know that your clients are going to be hanging out there. So if you're a residential uh, designer or decorator, you know that there's nothing better than Facebook. If you're a commercial designer, you may have some luck with LinkedIn. 
I would still add Facebook. You see, right now, and I don't know what's going to happen um, six or 12 months from now, but right now, Facebook is a very powerful platform. I don't get paid to say this, but this is just something that's worked for me and my clients. So why is Facebook a powerful platform? Because it has billions of users that are actively going there um, to hang out, to share ideas, to look for ideas. They're searching for solutions. And it is a platform that also lets you target and find your ideal clients much easier than any other platform out there. So let's say if you're a, an interior designer who focuses on designing nurseries and you're looking for expectant moms within a certain geographic area, um, you can actually easily do that in Facebook. So that's a pretty powerful tool. So I want you to um, think about which social media you're comfortable using, where your clients are gonna be hanging out, select one, maybe two platforms and drop everything else. You have permission to do that now from me. Next step is to plan your content one month at a time. I'm going to actually show you how to do that very easily. Um, you use something, what you know, everyone calls them content calendars. You can even use an Excel sheet or just draw a calendar, grab a calendar um, and start writing down posts for each month. Uh, at the beginning of the month, middle of the month, it doesn't matter. Just, you know, start planning uh, ahead of time what you're going to be writing about. And I'm actually going to give you some tips on that as well. Now, here's something I want you to keep in mind. Do not fill that calendar with other people's content. I don't want you to take pictures or blogs from magazine and just share them with your audience. If that's how you're doing it right now, it's the worst way of uh, building your own credibility because you're now leveraging other people's content um, and people don't get to know, like, or trust you or your abilities. Then I want you to look into some of the automation tools like Buffer, Meet Edgar, or IFTTT, which is if this, then that, or Hootsuite. These are some of the tools that you can use and pre-populate your content ahead of time so that you're not staring at your iPhone or your desktop every single day going, what am I going to write about? And then finally, spend or schedule. 20 minutes max each day to monitor what kind of reactions you're getting, what kind of responses you're getting, engage with your audience, share your content on different platforms, great. That's all you need to do. So now let's talk about what you're actually gonna be filling up um, in that content calendar one month at a time. It's using a trick called the 20X Content Grid. This is a powerful, powerful system that works each and every time. We've worked with retailers, we've worked with manufacturers and distributors, and have helped them bring thousands of clicks and no joke, millions of dollars from uh, social media activities using our 20X content grid. What it is, is basically something like this. You have a project that you're working on with a client, whether it's a bedroom redesign or a bathroom renovation or a basement remodel or an outdoor uh, oasis. You take that one project and I want you to um, split that project into 20 different content ideas. It could be something like sharing a mood board it could be something about doing a product review of the one item, like one paint or one dresser, why that's so important, why did you love it so much? Or maybe sharing um, a DIY project that your audience can quickly do about maybe you know, refurbishing something. Um, you can also share a before and after. Most designers actually, when they're sharing a project, leave it to the before and after. I want you to create that project and tell a story with 20 different topics and um, you know share uh, and a, a supplier interview and take them behind the scenes of what's going on um, and 
This way you can build that engagement and credibility and let your ideal clients into your world. You're bringing them nuggets and knowledge that now they're going to say, wow, this is the person who really takes their work seriously next time or when I'm ready, this is a person I want to work with. So that is how you create uh, an engagement uh, and using just a very simple tool like the 20x grid and taking that one project and creating, um, you know, 20 different uh, posts, social media posts for you. That's step number one. Step number two, now that you've got a game plan on social media, this is where the strategy comes into place. I want you to take your audience or your clients to a sign up page inside of your website or it could be a landing page. I've, you know, I have clients who do both or have done both. Um, and then give them a compelling reason to leave their email. Why would they want to do that? Because you're going to give them something valuable, um, like a piece of content, which could be um, your portfolio. I like to call it your profitable portfolio. And why is that? Why do I call a designer's portfolio into a profitable? Profitable portfolio? Well, think about it. Your design portfolio, when done right, is the most powerful way to connect with your audience. It helps you establish your authority in your area of expertise, and it's the perfect way to give them massive value so they can decide if they would like to work with you. Most designers are leaving money on the table with the way they're structuring their design portfolios right now. Those does, uh, portfolios tend to have a before and after picture, uh, mostly even after pictures, and they don't say, they don't tell you the story. They don't take you behind the scenes. You have no idea of what this was all about. Um, maybe there's a testimonial of how happy the client is, but it doesn't really connect me um, to you. So this is what I want you to consider when you're creating a, a good, profitable design portfolio. It should have three components. The first one being an intro. Intro where you can build rapport, you can connect with the prospect's pain and issues. Remember, this is from shift number one. You have to know your ideal client's pain or the issues that they're going through so that step number two, you can offer solution. And you do that by sharing your expertise, your experience, and you can show to them that you can solve this issue and get rid of that pain that they're experiencing. And then finally, this is gold. You need to have an offer, which gives clear instructions on how to move forward with you by making an irresistible offer. So those are the three key components of a um, profitable portfolio. I don't want you to use a generic portfolio with just pictures and maybe a testimonial. I want you to start considering um, your portfolio as your secret weapon um, and make it into a profitable portfolio. Now, my clients have used por portfolios in an ebook format, like a PDF. Um, they've had printed books. But more, more and more, they're moving towards creating a video-based portfolio, which these days is super simple to um, create. With an iPhone and a couple of free software, you can actually have a video-based portfolio, which you can send um, to your clients very easily and use it for many different purposes. The final step in your client attraction uh, system is actually um, asking them to fill out a new client consultation form. Now, how often do you do that? Right now, you're waiting for a lead to come through. They'll send you an email. You send them an email back, or maybe you call them, and then there's phone tag, and then um, it takes weeks before you even get to speak to them. Send them to a new client consultation form and ask them to schedule a time in your calendar. This way, you can screen out the wrong clients, your not so ideal clients, and then you can invite the perfect clients for your business. So there, now that you've attracted the client with the right social media strategy, given them valuable content about solving their issue, you're now having a 
flow of pre-qualified, ideal, perfect clients coming into your business day in and day out. It's as simple as that. You don't have to write any more new blogs if you don't want to. If you enjoy doing them, great. You don't have to. You don't have to attend networking events. Um, if you enjoy doing them, great. Now you can actually take them to your landing page and say, this is where you can find out about me and have them download that perfect portfolio or the profitable portfolio. You see, perfect clients um, are those that are pre-sold, interested, and eager to work with you. And even better than that is to have a constant flow of perfect clients coming into your uh, world on a daily basis. So this is why it is so important for you to create a client attraction system that works in the back end, bringing you new leads day in and day out, while you work on the front end of your business, working with the clients you love and adore. There are only four steps in this process. So you're not spreading yourself thin, wondering what to focus your energy on. And in those four steps, you control your time and you can track where the clients are, are going from one step to another. If there's anything that's not working, you can tweak and fix that. Isn't that simple? So now let's do a quick recap of what we've talked about so far. So um, now at this point, we know that there has been a huge shift in the design industry, right? And your key to standing out is by focusing on the solutions and not the services. We talked about why you need to charge premium rates for your service and how to create a client attraction system. Now let's look at how to create a profit making roadmap by working less and earning more. And I'll even show you the fastest way of getting there. But before we get into that, I want to quickly ask you um, to grab a piece of paper or a post-it note and write down um, these questions, or preferably the answers to these questions. The first question is, what is your income goal? I want you to make this number as big as you like. There, if there were no limits, what would you like to be earning? What would you like to take home? Not your project fees, but what would be your income goal? Now the next question is, why is that number so important? In just a couple of words, tell me what would it mean for you to earn that amount? It could be something practical like pay down the mortgage or send your kids to private school or pay for their college. Or it could be something as extravagant as going to India to see the Taj Mahal. Whatever your reason is to earn that income number, I want you to write that down. The final question is going to perhaps take a little bit of time, but I want you to at least make an attempt to answer how many clients and how many hours of work will it take for you to reach your income goals this year? Now, for most of us, that is a pretty large number, a pretty daunting number, in fact. So the next shift, I want you to pay very close attention because I'm going to help you not only shrink that number of number of clients and the number of hours, but I'll show you how to do it with ease and with joy. So let's get to it. Because the fourth shift is about creating leverage for yourself and disconnecting your time from your income. You see, most six-figure earners that I've come across and that I have worked with have found a way to disconnect themselves from their business and create real freedom in their lives. They can work from wherever they want. They can work whenever they want. And they work with whomever they want because they've got a list of pre-qualified clients that they can go through. Um, it's not a surprise. They're not desperate. They're not just you know, making decisions because they have to put food on the table or to pay mortgage. They have true freedom in their lives. And this freedom or leverage has actually given them not only more income, more impact, 
but also more influence in the industry. So how do you achieve that? Let's look at something what I call the profit pyramid. And at the top of the pyramid, we're going to write down your income goal. The next thing um, we're going to write down is your one-on-one -on -one client work that you're currently already doing, right? There's no surprise there. Um, I want you to just write this down for now, your one-on-one -on -one design service. But the only difference in that is I want you to think a little bit bigger. Now that you have understood why it's important to command a higher price point, I want you to stretch that a little bit in terms of what you could earn on a monthly basis with your new fees, working one-on-one -on -one with clients. So let's say just for an example, you want to earn $10,000. The next thing I want you to write down is VIP days. Now this is where you set aside maybe one, two, or three days a month where you work um, intensely for six or eight hours with a specific client, one-on-one. -on -one. You're still working one-on-one, -on -one, but it's a very focused amount of work that you're doing to create a very specific outcome for them. So it could be something like creating a design or a plan for a kitchen reno. Or it could be about spending a day taking them from suppliers and helping them choose their materials or their colors or what have you. So you can work maybe one, two, three days like that in a month, fill up those days, and you could charge something like two to $4,000. Now, isn't that great? Because what it does is it'll give you quick injection of cash. It doesn't quite free up your time because you're still working. It's, it is trading um, dollars for hours still, um, but it's very intensive, um, it's very focused, and it'll give you a quick injection of cash for clients. And the other thing is that those clients that you end up working VIP days with also get to know, like, and trust you, and they can decide if they wanna work with you uh, on a bigger project next. So next, I want you to write down group programs. The idea is that you create online programs where you can work with a group of clients at a time, leveraging your expertise and teaching others how to do some of the legwork that you are currently doing. And you can charge anywhere from, again, two to $4,000, but the difference here is that now you're working in a group setting. So that 2,000, you're probably working with six clients, turns um, into an income of $12,000. So you see how now you're working with six people at a time, you're freeing up your time, and you're making um, uh, still uh, quite a covetable and a high amount of income because you're earning in multiples of this amount, right? So now I want you to add up your, your monthly uh, revenue from that. $10,000, maybe two VIP clients is $4,000. And if you had $12,000 coming in, that's $22,000 and $26,000 a month. But what does that do for a year, right? So this literally is the fastest way to achieving that freedom. You don't have to do all the stages of a profit pyramid at the same time. In fact, you can set up one stage, put it in motion, let it create leveraged income for you while you work on the next step. But once you have it in place, it is literally the fastest way for you to achieve that income goal, like I just showed you. Um, it doesn't even have to include all three stages for you. For some people, um, it just might you know, be a different kind of a, a distribution of where you spend your time. So just to exactly show you how this is done, I wanna share a success story. This is Kayla. Kayla specializes in helping seniors, boomers, and retirees with aging in place design. This is something that she was certified for. Her business was doing really well. She was charging $125 an hour working one-on-one. -on -one. Now her business was growing, and so her income was, was quite high, but basically her income was capped at how many hours she spent. 
So let's look at those numbers, $125 an hour. Let's say if she worked every single hour, 40 hours uh, weeks, she was making $5,000 a week or $20,000 a month. But when you take a look at the whole workload, she was doing 120 hours each month. So when we worked together, we started to think of a group program, a six week online program, which she started out at $2,000 and later actually increased that amount uh, because she realized how, uh, what, what profound impact she was actually making in her clients' lives. So what it in, entailed is that she had weekly training modules that she sent out via email, and then she had some video training for her clients to do each week. She also had uh, Q&A sessions, uh, group calls, that took up one hour of her week. Plus, she spent 20 minutes a day working on that social media strategy that I just shared with you in the last shift. Um, and then she, that's how she spent time on her Facebook group and educated people about her and her course. And that led her to a workload of 12 hours a month. Think about it, four weekly calls plus 20 minutes a day translated to 12 hours per month. And in the beginning, like I said, she signed up six clients at $2,000 and she was making $12,000 by working only 12 hours per month. That's 10% of the original time she was working and at an hourly rate of $1,000. But more than anything else, she was able to separate herself uh, and her time from her income. She's no longer tied to how much time she has to spend in order to make her income go. And this is how really you create leverage in your business. Is it easy? Probably not in the beginning, right? It's like learning a new skill. And we all have to go through the learning curve. But is it worth it? You tell me, is it worth it for you to work less hours and earn more money while delivering amazing value and results for your clients? Now, don't forget, Kayla can always, you know, work one-on-one -on -one with clients still, um, but she's not tied to that because she has this income coming in of a minimum of $12,000. So then she can choose and pick who she wants to work with utilizing the client attraction system that I went through as well. So these are the tools that are also available to you if you're looking to create that life of freedom and also earn more than you ever thought possible uh, with doing just a bit of work up front. Now the fifth shift is very important. I want you to pay attention here um, because this is literally how I was able to turn my business around and how I was able to create that freedom and leverage. Um, so I really do want, to pay, want you to pay attention to this one. The fifth shift is about investing in a mentor. Everyone should have a mentor. Mentoring brings two very important things, not only new ideas, but also accountability. You see, you have new ideas in your head right now that wouldn't have been there had you not watched this training. But ideas and information alone are meaningless. In fact, they are everywhere these days. You can Google, passive income or leverage income, and you can find all of these answers, but they're meaningless if you don't take action on them. So a mentor is what you need uh, to not only give you great ideas, but also make sure that you act on them. And a great mentor will also bring together a powerful group of employees, oh sorry, people, all working towards similar goals, um, and they're all committed in achieving those goals. And I'll be honest, in working with some of the groups that I have uh, through the mentors, uh, we were able to accomplish a lot more and a lot quicker because we're, we're learning from each other's successes. So here are some of the mentors I've worked with. This is Anne McEvitt. She is um, an elite mentor, an elite coach for, uh, based out of Scotland. I've worked with Russ Afino, um, of clients on demand who helped me uh, transform my business into the online space. And I've worked with Todd Herman. In fact, he is, I'm in his mastermind right now. And we, he's helped me with productivity and creating um, 
you know, new possibilities for my business that never existed before. And I highly, highly encourage you to start looking for mentors or coaches who can fast track your success so you're not left behind. So today I promised to show you how to turn your expertise into a six-figure income, even if that number seems ridiculous and unachievable for you right now, how to command a premium price, stop trading dollars for hours, and move quickly to earning five figures a month, and how to attract and connect with your ideal clients in a consistent and reliable way. I also shared with you how to leverage your expertise into group programs instead of working one-on-one -on -one so that you can make more money in less time and how to do all of this without the overwhelm, frustrations, and burnout from all the marketing hacks that everyone has you doing. We know everything is changing in the design industry. The design industry is changing. The client's needs are changing. Sales and marketing is changing, and even technology is changing. So now it's up to you to figure out how you're gonna change yourself and your business so that you not only just survive, but thrive in these changing times. And you can do that by implementing the five shifts that we talked about today. Focusing on solutions and not services. Commanding a premium pricing. How to streamline your marketing and implement a client attraction system. Working only 20 minutes a day on social media sounds great. Um, and how to disconnect your time from your income. And finally, to invest in yourself and your business. That is the key. And the time to do this is right now. Because now you have a choice. You can ignore what I taught you today. You can ignore the changes that are going on around you and continue doing what you've been doing so far, offering a laundry list of services and becoming a Me Too designer, charging low rates and then attracting low-tiered clients. Or you can focus on building a business that you want to jump out of bed from every morning while working with clients who love and adore you, who respect your decisions, and who show up prepared to work with you and enjoy a lifestyle that you've always dreamed of. And so if you're looking to fast track and create a life that you've always dreamed of, of freedom, then this is how I can help. I have set aside some time in the next week to speak to you personally about how you can apply these ideas to your business starting today. We will sit on a call and we will figure out whatever your current challenges are in your business right now and we will work together to design a solution that's just right for you. Remember we talked about three different stages in the profit pyramid. Uh, you don't have to work on all three of them at the same time. You don't even have to work on, on those three at the same time. Um, so we want to create a plan that's right for you and for your business. And the cost for this call is absolutely free. Now, who this is for, you must be absolutely committed to hitting your income goals with total integrity and a true concern for creating solutions for your clients. Um, you must be outstanding at what you do and you can command a premium pricing. Um, I only work, want to work with people who are game changers in their industry. If you're operating a hobby business, then this call is not for you. Please do not waste your time uh, because I won't be able to help you. And on the call, like I said, I'll help you get total clarity about exactly what your business should look like and the exact steps you should take to achieve your income goal. If that's right for you, book a session right now by clicking on the button that's appearing at the bottom of the screen. When you click on this button or the link, it'll be, uh, take you to a web page which has my calendar on it. I want you to pick a time that works for you. Next, you'll be taken to an application form. It's pretty straightforward, but what it does is it gives me a little bit of information about you. So please make sure you fill it in so that I can spend some time doing some research and I'm not wasting any of our precious time together. So I wanna focus that time on helping you get that clarity in your messaging in creating your profit pyramid. Sound good? So now make sure you pick a time. Remember, I personally attend all the calls and I only have so many hours set aside to doing this. 
So make sure you grab one of the remaining time slots. Thank you so much for attending this presentation. I look forward to talking to you. Take care. Bye-bye.